mean, here's, here's, the, here's the residence within 300, so this tells you within 500, all those businesses are there. Oh, Barney. Yeah, I've been there for a long time. Giving you a thumbs up. Are you ready? Good evening and welcome to the Fox Pro Zoning Board of Appeals April 20, 2023 meeting. Uh, this meeting is being recorded and broadcast by Fox Pro Cable Access. So we have some general business items. The um, minutes from March 9, March 16, and April 4. Any questions or revisions or comments? Um, I had, Diane, I had sent you one very right. small. Right, I got, um, everybody was okay with March 9th. I got edits from March 16th from both Barney and you, and I got, and I spelled Lorraine's name wrong, sorry. <laughs> and then I cut and pasted through the entire thing um, on April 4th. So, um, so one would be as submitted and the other two as amended. So, so Diana has now spelled your name wrong once and Lorraine's <laughs> once. So. Usually my name gets spelled wrong. Kurt and I are next. next. Yeah, yeah. Who is next? <laughs> Uh, want to make a motion? Uh, I move that we um, approve the minutes from March 9th, March 16th, and April 4th of this year. Second. Uh, Kim? Yes. Kurt? Yes. Lorraine? I know she said yes, but... Yep. <laughs> and Barney, yes. Um, Diana asked us to let her know what our summer schedules are, respective summer schedules are. Um, I know you're gone in July. I'm gone, yes. And you're gone? Uh, I'm going uh, at the end of May. Okay. But that's after our meeting. You're going to be here? Yeah, I'll be here for the meeting, yep. Okay. I'm gone in July. So I actually, I'm, I somehow missed the question. So I, I apologize. So you're gone in so May and I'm July. Gone, I'm gone for the May and July, but let me go back and take a look at my schedule. I apologize. I did not look that over. Yeah, I'll be away the week of the June meeting. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we have an extra Thursday in June. Uh, we need to. Yeah, we do. We need to reschedule. And L Lorraine, are you um, aware of what your summer vacation schedules are? She's still muted. I'm not muted. No, now we can hear you. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay. I'm I'm out the second to last week of June. Second last week of second. So and last week? Yeah. No, second to last week of June. Okay. Yep. I get the date. Would be the 22nd if we do the Thursday yeah okay and I'm usually gone that, that week that we have the you know the meeting yeah, so we'll, we'll work good. around stuff yeah okay good thank you anything in yet for May Diana um, I the Gillette people for the sign have been emailing me a lot so they're going to be applying before next week okay for May. how about the um, wireless communication um, I talked to Ted fire on that that's still in the works but it is going to be going through he's not sure what time or when it would be but I just gave Diana a heads up that she should be expecting that soon okay so it's possible we'll it's have a that. possible it could be coming the same same time but it's still working out the the quirks in it so okay but it is gonna it, it, I was assured that it is gonna happen okay so we will have things in in May then Okay. All right. The time being 6.35 p.m., we have the continued public hearing of Ameri American Outdoor Advertising, which is requesting a special sign permit pursuant to the Code of the Town of Foxborough, Massachusetts, Chapter 213 Signs, Section 213 3C1A and 213 5A1 Table 1 Permitted Signs for Sign District 2, and Section 213 6B2C, to allow the construction of a two-sided electronic billboard at 1 Springbrook Road, which is Assessor's Map 94, Parcel 19, in Sign District 2. Mr. Burr. Uh, thank you. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. My name is Robert Burr. I'm in, I represent American Outdoor Advertising 3 LLC and Daniel and Claudine Rounds. I'm here this evening with 
uh, Mr. Stephen Russ behind me, who's a managing member of the corporate entity, and Daniel and Claudine Rounds in the back of the room, residents of 204 Green Street, Foxborough, and also the owners of the commercial property known as One Spr Springbrook Road in Foxborough. Uh, to my right is Mr. William Buckley, uh, Bay Colony Engineering, who's done the site uh, plan for this, this project. American Outdoor Advertising has entered into a 20-year lease with the rounds at the subject property. Again, One Springbrook Road. We are here this evening seeking the special signed permit, as you described, Mr. Chairman. At the special town meeting held January 30th, 2023, the town of Foxborough amended Section 213, 5.8.1, the Table 1, that essentially allows uh, consideration of uh, billboards in sign district two subject to the issuance of a special sign permit as long as it meets the further regulations described in section 213.6.b2c um, specific to the, the uh, i-95 area which i'll get into in greater detail foxborough select board has negotiated and, and executed a mitigation agreement by the way i should have said i've included a memorandum on the formal petition here i'm just highlighting some of the uh, highlights here. Again, uh, American Outdoor Advertising has negotiated with Foxborough a mitigation agreement that provides for, among other things, uh, 50, 000, up to $50,000 per year in annual grant, $25,000 per year per digital face, um, an opportunity for an additional 5% of royalty payments to the town of Foxborough, on any and all gross annual revenue collected in excess of $500,000. Six hours of free advertising per digital face side for a total of 12 hours per month for the town to advertise community related events and other nonprofit government advertising. An annual payment bond to assure that the grant payments due the town are in fact paid by a surety if the entity uh, does not pay them. And then finally, of course, town oversight of the content of the billboard advertising. I've attached that this evening as Exhibit A, the fully executed mitigation agreement with Foxborough. The $50,000, Mr. Chairman, is, uh, is an important mitigation for Foxborough, but really the advertising time, the um, value added is significant and maybe as much as, as that amount. Um, Foxborough, uh, through Mr. Keegan and the select board's office was very interested in making sure that they got as much advertising time as possible, and that's a significant um, benefit to the town. American Outdoor Advertising has completed a full application pursuant to Section 213-3.B and 213-3.E for special sign permits. This has been advertised in the Sun Chronicle. As you stated, Mr. Chairman, the uh, public hearing was opened on March 16th, continued to this evening. Petitioners now come before you seeking a special signed permit to construct a two-sided billboard at One Springbrook Road in Foxborough. All signs in the town of Foxborough are subject to um, certain conditions. Uh, we do consider this to be an electronic sign as defined under 213-2 and also as a billboard under 213-3.B. Billboards require special sign permits under 213-3.C.2, subsections A through I. Uh, the first uh, requirement, there are following factors uh, fall under that section of the bylaw. First is design guidelines set out under section 213-7. Signs shall be consolidated and limited in number. The petitioner here this evening contemplates only one poll with two electronic digital face display monitors, so there's not going to be a number of signs in this area. Subsection 2 requires uh, uh, or consideration of the high quality materials. Petitioner only uses state-of-the-art fabricators and state-of-the-art electronic digital face display monitors that are consistent throughout the state that are also energy efficient and consistent with 700 CMR 3.07. All signs, I should have stated, um, require state licensure as well under this regulation all new sign permits that greatly regulate uh, animation movement colors <coughs> energy efficiency um, safety concerns for motorists etc 
Science shall not observe any architectural features of the or architectural fe features. This sign is going to be um, the far uh, corner of the lot. It should not obstruct in any way any obscure any of the architectural features of the existing building. Petitioner will use a state-of-the-art reinforced cement footing installed by experienced licensed excavators and installers. Subsection 4, colors and illumination of the sign shall be appropriate intensity. Again, I've stated that the petitioner will follow the rules and oh, should follow the regulations of 700 CMR 3.07. Again, also under appropriately sized and scaled following that same regulation. And it is not considered a multi-tenant building at One Springbrook Road. The impact on the uh, uh, budding neighborhood proposed bill for board is consistent with the purpose of the bylaws because the bylaw permits double face signs now uh, because of the special town meeting double face electronic digital billboards in sign district two pursuant to section 213-6.b.2 proposed billboard will be at a significance from the nearest commercial butter under section c it's not near a public park under section D, it's the only billboard of similarity in the area. Subsection E, it's 1,247 feet from a residential use on the same side of the interstate and 555 feet away from a residential um, unit on the opposite side of I-95. And importantly, that section of I-95 also has a median strip of grass and trees. The current uh, land has one commercial building and a cell tower, which Mr. Buckley will describe the size of that here in a moment. Public safety concerns, again, the uh, any billboard approved locally here needs to obtain a permit from the Department of Transportation Office of Outdoor Advertising, so any public safety concerns have to follow Regulation 700 CMR 3.0. Same is true for illuminate, illumination, size and height. Under Section I, um, factors uh, benefit to the Town of Foxborough. Again, as I stated earlier, petitioners executed a mitigation agreement with the Town of Foxborough as Exhibit A, provides a significant annual payment to the Town, protected by an annual bond, along with the opportunity for royalties above a revenue target. The agreement also provides the Town with six hours per digital face, 12 hours in the aggregate for a two-sided, uh, two-faced two billboard and value-added free advertising. The town through its select board and ZBA will be entitled to monitor all content for appropriateness. Being a little bit repetitive here, subsection C of the bylaw requires an executed mitigation agreement under 213.3E10. Again, as I've stated, that has been executed. This board recently also for uh, billboards requires a bond for removal um, in a conversation I had with the chair, uh, it's been suggested $20,000. Petitioner certainly intends to acquire a bond in that amount or in a higher amount if the numbers have changed since that period of time, but certainly uh, a bond to be able to um, ensure that the town has funds to be able to remove a sign that would be considered to be abandoned. Subse uh, under subsection 213.3J, no sign may be transferred or assigned. The petitioner has no intentions on assigning them, but if the commercial opportunity presented itself and it was in the best interest of all the interested parties, we would come back under that uh, bylaw to seek assignment. Under section two of my brief, um, again, as I've stated, the, at the special town meeting January 30th, 2023, among other things, uh, section 213-5, dash A subsection one, table one um, was amended to allow for uh, billboards in sign district two by issuance of a special sign permit. Pursuant to section 213.6.B subsection two. And under that, uh, as in my brief, the um, board must be within a lot area that's not more than 250 feet from Interstate I-95. Again, I have the talented Mr. Buckley with me here this evening, but I do believe it's about 45 feet from the Interstate 95 layout. No billboard shall exceed 672 square feet in signed area. That's exactly what we do contemplate, and that's consistent with billboards of this type. 
No billboard may be placed within 1,500 feet of another billboard. There are no other billboards in the area. Such billboards must be set back at least 10 feet. This proposed billboard will be 10 feet from, um, uh, from the lot line on one side, actually 25 feet at the, on, another, on, the, at the, on the Springbrook Road side. May not be placed within 1,000 feet of a residential unit on the same side of Interstate 95 here as designed by Bay Colony, it's 1,247 feet from an existing residential unit on the same side of Interstate 95 and may not be within 500 feet of an existing residential unit on the opposite side. Here, the closest residential unit is 555 feet. May not be placed within 1,000 feet of any interchange of Interstate I-95 as, as measured from the nearest point of the beginning or end of pavement widening at the exit from or entrance to the main travel way of such highway. Proposed billboard is not within 1,000 feet of any interchange of Interstate 95 as measured from the nearest point of the beginning or end of the pavement widening at the exit or entrance to the main travel way to such business. At least two separate businesses. My understanding from Mr. Buckley is there are six. I listed two that or were the closest, certainly D rounds construction, who happens to also be the petitioner. I don't think they're precluded from being included in that list by virtue of the fact that they are the applicant. D rounds construction is one business located at one Springbrook Road. Foxboro Sports Center is located at 10 East Belcher Road. Uh, within 500 feet. And then further general restrictions under subsection B in my brief 213-5D8 uh, automatic message boards and bills boards shall not be animated. Uh, petitioner does not contemplate animation nor is animation permitted under the state regulation. There can also not be any moving content or video. Again, petitioner does not comply. No, we'll, we'll comply with this section. Um, and again, it's consistent also with the state regulation as well, too. So in summary, uh, Mr. Chairman, petitioner subject property lies in signed District 2. Submitted plans and other materials represent a complete application consistent with the newly adopted signed bylaw changes adopted at the special town meeting held January 30th. Projects in harmony with the neighborhood because it lies in a limited industrial district that is significantly distanced to residential districts. Project expects to produce reoccurring revenue for the town and value added significant free advertisement to the town while maintaining the town's ability to regulate the content of every advertisement. Therefore, we believe a special permit should issue uh, at this location. Thank you. Mr. Buckley. So, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, again, my name is Bill Buckley from Bay Colony Group. And so I would have put up here, this is a, um, a rendering that includes an aerial photograph or aerial picture of the, the plan that you have. We gave you several drawings that show the location of the proposed billboard. So this is the uh, the, the smallest scale, the largest scale actually, it shows the proposed billboard. It's located in the northerly corner of the lot. It is at the on the intersection of East Belcher and Springbrook. It's 10 feet off of East Belcher Road and it's 25 feet off of Springbrook Road. And that's not the post, that is the actual sign itself. Um, so this parcel also contains a, a business, as Attorney Burgess said, and uh, it also contains a monopole on it, which is right in this area here. Uh, you can just see it's kind of sideways to it. That monopole is about 122 feet wide, according to the record documents um, that we saw online today. Um, this billboard is 90 feet. 90 feet. 90 feet tall at this point. Pole is 90 feet, which is consistent with uh, uh, billboards at interstate, limited access interstate interchanges throughout the state. Then that, and that is to overcome generally the highways, not to interject too much, but the, uh, the highway runoff, most of the time you will see uh, that the um, roadway or the abutting land is uh, is lower than the actual highway. So in this particular case, I'm just going to go to another drawing, which again, you have all these drawings. I'm just going to put them up so that um, you get a better feel for them, at least from the aerial <coughs> point of view. It's harder to read the um, text on it, but... 
So again, here is the, the parcel of land we're talking about. Here is the, the, the rounds business. This is um, Springbrook Road. Here's each Belcher. Here's the, the, um, the sign itself. And what we've done is we've just showed you how it lays out in the neighborhood. So this is the closest residential building on the um, on our side of 95. It's about 1,247 feet. And that's at Kathy Drive. And then you look on the other side of 95, which is here. This is the closest residential um, building, which is at the, the end of the cul-de-sac off of uh, West Belcher Road. And again, as Attorney Burgess said, is um, the elevations here are about, so the elevation of the ground here on the property is about 278 feet above sea level. I-95 in the middle here, like between the house and the billboard, is about uh, 10 feet higher. It's about elevation 285. And then West Belcher at the end where the home is, is a little bit higher still. It's about elevation 294. <clears throat> And as I, I think I stated earlier, is the, the current cell tower is about 122 feet high. So it's the, if that gives you a visual of what you're seeing there, the, the billboard is going to be two feet lower than it at its approximate highest point. And I, that concludes my presentation, Mr. Chairman. Bill, I got one question for you. On, on the uh, location map that you provided, um, it does show the distance to the residential areas. Can you also, can you revise that to show the distance to the uh, commercial activities? Yes. And when you say commercial activities, that, that includes like parking areas? Yes. The cellar, okay. Yeah. In accordance, with, you know, again, if you need a, to know exactly what the bylaw, you know, requires as far as measurement, let me know. But. Yep. Kim, questions? Uh, what is the approximate distance from the proposed billboard pole to the cell tower? It is approximately about 175 feet. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, current questions? Uh, yes, uh, you mentioned the height of the pole is 90 feet. Is that from grade to the, say, bottom of the sign, i.e. the top of the pole? Or what is the overall, I'm trying to read the, the, the text is very small, the, the overall approximate height from grade to the top of the sign? No, I've never seen that plan. 90 feet. It is the, so the top of the sign is 90 feet. Right. Oh, okay. So the top of the sign from grade is approximately yes. 90 feet. Yes. Okay. Top of the sign. Okay. I've been advised it's the top of the sign. Yep. Good. Okay. Okay. You can keep that. That's all I had, Marty. Okay. Lorraine, any questions? I don't have any questions, Barney. Okay. Bob, the, um, as you probably know, we're a, even though we're a board of five, although four of us are here, including on Zoom, yeah. um, Lorraine will be voting, I will be voting, and Kim will be voting. Okay. Okay. Any member of the public have any questions? Yeah, I do. Can you tell us who you are, please? Paul Morrison, South Grove Street. Mm -hmm. Now, the presentation here, it's going to be two-sided, correct? Yes. Okay, so what's going to be on the other side when you pass this? It's going to be bright lights. That's going to be in people's mirrors. Going up north. That doesn't make any sense. Do you want to explain how, or can Mr. Ross explain how these these work? Uh, yeah, I wasn't not quite exactly clear. If you'd like to Sure. So, uh, Stephen Ross, American come to him, Outdoor. Why don't you come to a microphone? What is your... I understand when you approach the sign. Yes. But when you pass it, it should be dark. So, so, okay, so it's, it's a V structure. Okay. So when you're heading north on 95 and south on 95, that's when you'll view each of the faces. You won't see any light behind it. No, no, no. I mean, if you go by it, if it's a V, 
You're going to be seeing that same sign that the uh, southbound side is seeing. No, it's about a 30-foot spread from the back end, so you'll only see one face in one direction, in each direction. No, you're not following me. I, I, I think I, if it's if this is the lane here and the signs right here. Yes. And you're going along, and you're saying it's going to be a V like this. Yes. Okay. Then people are going to be seeing the other side. In their rearview mirror. Yeah, it's going to be you know. So yes, I guess it's possible if you look in your rearview mirror. Yes, you can see that. Okay, that's going to blind people. You got enough light behind you with the car's headlights. This is going to you know accelerate it. So I, I'd, I'd have to disagree with that. Uh, car headlights are much brighter than the sign is. You'll see the sign as you're coming toward it, and then in your rearview mirror, yes, you'll see the other side, but it won't be as bright as a car's headlights. So that still doesn't make you know make it right. You know, it's. I mean, if you got elderly people going along, they're already blinded anyways. You know. Let, let, I let, mean, with the lights behind them and the headlights. I mean, let, 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 me ask, let, me, let me ask Mr. Morrison a question. There are other billboards on 95. The same and configuration, right? Not, same, same configuration. Not many. There's more in Saugus. So well, Town I'm not, of I'm not concerned about Saugus. Saugus I know that there, there are some in Canton, and I believe you can see, I don't know if it's in Sharon or Walpole, but, but there are billboards that you can see on 95. I understand that, and Route 1 Do, as well. I, have you, driving south, say, from... Um, you know, from 128, have you seen in your rearview mirror? Have you been blinded by the billboard in Canton? Oh, well, everybody's blinded by the light. Isn't that right? I'm asking <laughs> you. Yeah, it's, it's not good. Uh -huh. You know, here's another thing, too. Why don't you call up, postpone this hearing, why don't you call up the town of Saugus and see how much they're getting from these signs? They could be getting more money because they do have a lot on Route 1. The issue of mitigation is one for which the Board of Selectmen or their designee, and it's been the town manager, has responsibility. That individual negotiated a contract with Mr. Burr's client. He obviously felt that the amount of money that the town was receiving and the other benefits that the town was receiving under the mitigation agreement were acceptable. Well, he's it's gone not, now. It is not our responsibility as a board to judge what that individual has done. If you have a problem with it, my suggestion is you speak with the town manager. Well, the old town manager is gone. He made a deal. Now we got a new one who's probably a little better. If you have a problem with what the town has received, you're welcome to speak with the town manager. I think we discussed this before. You, you had a question about the billboards in the past. Right. And we also discussed that the zoning board has nothing to do with the revenue that's collected or the negotiations of that. It's not in our purview. So you're bringing it up again, but there's nothing that we can do about that. Well, sure, you can postpone the hearing, and then you could say, let's look into it further and see what the other towns up in the North Shore are getting. Are, are, do, you, do you have any documentation to say that the town manager hasn't done that? I don't know. I mean, no, no I'm asking he, you. I'm asking you. I'm the asking old you town manager. Uh, old or new. Do you have any documentation to support your claim that nobody has looked into this? I, I don't think he has looked into it. Uh, again, do you have any documentation to support your claim? Right now, I don't, but you okay, know, do you want me to get some? If you can find some documentation that states that this is not, you know, a, a, a deal or an arrangement that is equitable, then bring it in. What are you going to do then? No, you, 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 you bring it into the town manager. Our responsibility and our sole responsibility under the signed bylaw is to determine whether a billboard complies with the requirements of the bylaw and therefore merits a special signed permit. One of the conditions that the bylaw imposes is that there must be a mitigation agreement. It's not our responsibility to determine whether the mitigation agreement is good, bad, or indifferent. That's you the responsibility. That, in front that of you. is the responsibility of the town manager. No, we shouldn't have the responsibility to have it in front of you. You should have all documents in front of you. I do have it. We have all we germane have documents in front of us. That is not a germane document to this discussion. <clears throat> and we went over this the last time you brought this up with the billboard. It's not our purview to do this. 
I brought up the last time, you should have looked into it. Thank you, sir. Anybody else have any questions or wish to be heard? Do we have a motion to close the public portion of the hearing? I do actually have one more question oh, for the applicant. Uh, are, there, are there any cameras or recording devices on the, the two faces, on the pole, anything like that there are? Yes, there's a camera on each face that monitors what's being displayed, if there's any issues, and it's, uh, it's all monitored 24 hours a day. Okay, so those cameras are just facing the board, so they're not... Are they capturing what's happening on 95 no, or no, on the it's, property? No, no, it's a pole it's coming just... off the catwalk, just faces the board, that's it. Okay, just monitoring if, you know, any of the lights have gone out or that, that sort of thing. That's correct. Okay. Okay, thank you. Kim, do you want to make a motion? Uh, yes, I move that we uh, close the public portion of the meeting. Uh, Lorraine, will you second it? Sec second. Okay. Uh, Kim? Yes. Lorraine? Yes. And Barney, yes. Um, discussion? Actually, before we get into any detail, let me just say that the provisions under which this bylaw, I'm sorry, the provisions of the signed bylaw under which this application is being presented were approved at the special town meeting in January. The Attorney General's Office has yet to approve the bylaw changes. Um, I spoke with the town, or contacted the town clerk uh, today about it. He expects to receive a decision sometime in the next week or two. Okay. So obviously, if we approve this, we're going to condition it upon approval by the Attorney General's Office. That's acceptable. I, I've got no reason to believe that there's any problem with what the town approved. I think it's just a factor of, the, of, the, of a new Attorney General and changes in that office. Right. I okay. Agree. So let me let me just start that. Um, I, I think all of the criteria, all the requirements that the new bylaw provisions um, impose have been satisfied or are satisfied by this application. As far as the um, design itself, it's similar to what has been approved in the past by this board mm -hmm. with respect to billboards on um, on Route One. Uh, I see no difference in there. Um, the other thing I want to take note of is the fact that, if my math is correct, about 62% of the pe people who voted at town meeting approved the bylaw revisions. And I think that's a significant you know, vote to demonstrate um, that there's a desire on the town's part to have a billboard at, at some place along uh, Interstate 95. So I would be inclined, with the conditions we typically impose, to, uh, to vote in favor of this. Uh, yes, I agree with everything that you just said. I, I, you know, I think the voters have spoken through the special town meeting, and then I also think that the select board, having negotiated a mitigation agreement, that also tells us what direction the town is interested in going in with respect to this. Uh, finding this in the limited industrial district, the design itself is very familiar. Um, I would certainly like to um, go through our, you know, standard conditions, making sure that it is lit per the state regulations. Uh, no adult content, et cetera, et cetera. I know we have more mm -hmm. conditions than that. Uh, but yes, I agree with you. Yeah, Kurt? Uh, no, no other questions now. Uh, Lorraine? No, I, I agree that all the conditions have been met, Barney. Okay, so let me, let me do this. Let me make a motion to approve the uh, granting the special sign permit subject to the following 12 conditions. Um, number one, is approval by the Massachusetts Office of the Attorney General of the revisions to the signed bylaw that were approved at the town of Foxborough's January 30, 2023 special town meeting. Two, the billboard is to be constructed on a pole that shall not exceed 90 feet in height, shall be set back at least 10 feet from each lot line of the subject property. Each signed side of the billboard shall not exceed 672 square feet in area. Three, the construction and design of the billboard shall be as set forth in the design plans that you provided to us, Mr. Burr, with the application. The proposed billboard shall, shall be situated in the sub subject property as set forth in the Bay Colony plot plan that Bill will be revising, um, such that it shall be not less than 12,000, uh, sorry, 1,247 feet from any residential use 
located on the same side of Interstate 95 <coughs> and not less than 555 feet from any residential use that's located on the opposite side of the <coughs> highway. Four, no modification of the billboard as set forth in our decision is permitted without a prior written approval. Five, American Outdoor, in accordance with signed bylaw section 213.3E11, shall establish a bond or other financial surety with the town of Foxborough Treasurer in the amount of $20,000 towards payment of the cost of future removal of the billboard in the event of its abandonment. <clears throat> and that bond is to be submitted at the time that an application is submitted with the building commissioner for a permit to construct the billboard. Six, the special sign permit that's granted by the board in accordance with our decision is specific to, to American Outdoor. And in accordance with signed bylaw section 213.3J, it cannot be assigned, transferred, or conveyed to any other person or entity without the prior written authorization of the board. Seven, in the event that American Outdoor transfers ownership of the billboard to any other person or ent entity at any time subsequent to the issuance, issuance of the decision, the new owner of the billboard shall be required as a condition to the operation of such sign to obtain a special sign permit from the board and to establish a bond or other surety with the town of Foxborough Treasurer in an amount to be determined by the board in its discretion toward payment of the cost of future removal in the event of the billboard's abandonment. Eight, American Outdoor shall at all times in connection with the operation of the billboard <coughs> comply with the respect, respective provisions of signed bylaw section 213.5D8, 213.6A2A, and 213.6B2C, and 700 CMR 3.17, each of which provisions are incorporated in our decision by reference. Nine, in the event that the Town of Foxborough Chief of Police or Building Commissioner or any public safety official of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts determines or otherwise believes that glare or lighting from the billboard impairs the vision of motorists on Interstate 95 or otherwise interferes with the safe operation of motor vehicles on the highway, then American Outdoor shall, within 24 hours of notification, reduce the intensity of such sign to a level acceptable to such official. Ten, advertising on the proposed billboard of adult entertainment facilities and businesses is prohibited. Eleven, American Outdoor shall obtain such permit or permits as may be required for the construction and operation of the proposed billboard from the Director of the Office of Outdoor Advertising within the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Transportation and from the Town of Foxborough Building Commissioner, and 12 American Outdoor shall implement the terms of the mitigation agreement that it is ex executed with the Town of Foxborough, including payment of the monetary amounts as set forth therein, and the provision of up to six hours per calendar month of display time on each sign side of the billboard for public announcements that are requested by the Town of Foxborough. Anything else? No, sounds good. Kurt? No. Uh, Lorraine? Any no, questions? Sounds good. Okay, any questions? No, thank okay. you. Okay. So, I need a second to the motion? Second. Lorraine? We're voting yes. on the motion. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Uh, second no, to the motion. I, I made the motion. Kim, Kim seconded, so I'm roll call. Lorraine? Okay. I said yes. Okay. Him. <laughs> yes. yes. And me, yes. It's approved. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Thank I you. I should have a decision. Actually, Bill, if you can get something to us next week. Yes. Okay. I should have a decision written, and we should be able to sign it hopefully by the end of the next week. Sounds it's great. It's a 30-day appeal period. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you for your Thank time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, the time being 6.40 p.m., Dean Purcell seeks a special <clears throat> permit and or variance from the Code of the Town of Foxborough, Massachusetts, Chapter 275, Zoning, Section 4.
4.1.1, Table 4-1, Dimensional Regulations for Uses in Residential and Neighborhood Business Districts. To allow an addition with a side yard setback of six feet, where a setback of 15 feet is required. Property is located at Five, Five Elm Street, Foxborough, Massachusetts, in the R15 residential district, and it's not located in any restrictive overlay district. Yes, sir. Yes, hi, I'm Dean Purcell. I reside at Five Elm Street. This is uh, Jeffrey Statz, a good friend and uh, a professor of architecture who designed uh, the, uh, the handicapped bathroom. And how do you spell your name, sir? Jeffrey Statz. J Jeffrey with a J? Yep. And? F-F-R-E-Y. And your last name is? Stats, S-T-A-A-T-S. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. So let me, let me just explain. There are, there are four of us here, including yep. the young lady on Zoom. Right. Yep. Um, Kurt will vote, I will vote, and Kim will vote. Okay. okay. And I'll explain other things as we go along. Okay. Okay. Okay, very good. Thank you. Would you like to? Um, uh, <clears throat> sure, I can give you a brief uh, explanation of the what's and the why's. Um, this is really about aging in place. Um, Dean's mother wants to move in, and eventually Dean and his wife will need probably something like this too. It's a fully accessible, wheelchair accessible uh, addition on the southeast corner of the house. Uh, there's an entry door off the front porch, which makes coming and going convenient. There's a nice bay window that faces to the backyard, the trees and all of that, it's quite nice. Um, and <clears throat> this will allow access to the room that will be the bedroom, uh, to the rest of the house, the kitchen and the living and dining room, all on, all on one floor. So it's, as I said, it's really about aging in place. My mother is um, 88 years old and she's in an assisted living facility now. Um, she wants to come live with, with us and uh, so I'm here trying to uh, make that possible. According to the, um, the plan that was provided, the house currently, as I see it, with the deck is eight feet from the side yard line? It is 18 feet. <clears throat> the okay. deck projects 12 feet from the house, just like this bathroom will. But the foundation of the house is 18 feet, correct? Yes. Okay, and the deck proceed, uh, how far is the deck from the house? <clears throat> so like another 12 feet, feet out from the house. 12. And the bathroom will be another two feet closer to the side yard line? Yes. Is that correct? Then the... Uh... It will be equal uh, in uh, dimensions to at least in the extension um, out from the house as the deck. Mm-hmm. <coughs> so it'll be in line with that deck right there. Okay. That's an existing deck that's there now? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. So as far as the foundation goes, you currently have an 18-foot side yard setback, and we have a required 15, and you're proposing six. Is that correct? Right, yeah. And uh, the deck is 12 feet. The existing deck is 12 feet. Yep. Just so I have the numbers. Right. Okay. Yeah, the existing deck will uh, be the, the same six feet from the property line, roughly, it looks like, as the addition. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. Oh, okay, so the deck is, is In the not... same plane as the as okay. That's the same plane. The projection of the bathroom will be no further than what the, the, the existing, existing deck, deck is. is. Yeah. Okay. Scott, you agree it's a special permit, I do. not a variance. Yeah, yeah. it's not not make, uh, creating a new nonconformity. Right. It's extending the pre-existing nonconformity. So, so when you applied um, 
when you submitted the application, you applied for a variance. But because the deck is already within the side yard setback, okay. you, you've got a, you already have a non-conforming um, structure. And because you're not extending, you're not, you're not creating a new non-conformity, yeah. um, it's still, you still, all you need is a special permit. You don't need a variance. Okay. 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 Which makes it a little bit easier as far as uh, satisfying the criteria of the bylaw. Oh, but, good. Okay. okay. Um, Kurt, any questions? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, no. Lorraine, any questions? No, thank you. Okay, does anybody in the public wish to be heard? Okay, you want to take a motion to close the portion of the public hearing? I move to close the public portion of the hearing. Second. Okay, I'm going to do it by roll call again. Uh, Kim? Yes. Kurt? Yes. And Barney? Yes. And this is similar to applications that we consider, you know, numerous times. Um, you know, again, I think all the criteria, all the requirements of a special permit are satisfied. You've got an existing house. You're not adding any, um, you know, need for um, utilities. Uh, you're not creating any parking issues. Um, there's certainly no detriment, you know, that I can see, you know, to, to the neighborhood. You know, we do impose certain conditions, but um, as far as I'm concerned, this is not any different than matters we've had in the past and we've, and we've approved. Okay. Uh, yes, I agree. Looking at 10.4.2, um, the criteria for a special permit, I don't see that anything that you're saying, um, you know, flies in the face of, of any of those, as Barney said. Uh, Kurt? No, I'm presuming that the addition will be keeping in character with the existing home materials, colors, et cetera, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lorraine, any comments? No, I'm all set. Thanks. Okay, so let me um, let me again make the motion with the conditions that I have. So I move to uh, grant a special permit with the following conditions. One is that the location of the addition in relation to the existing dwelling be as shown on on this plan, and we'll attach the plan as an exhibit to the uh, decision. Two, that the addition is 12 feet by 12 feet in area and it's situated no closer than six feet at its closest point to the southeasterly side yard line. Mm -hmm. And three, that the addition and the existing dwelling have exterior materials of comparable architectural type materials and color. Anything else? No. Okay. No. You want to second it? Second. Okay. Kim? Yes. Uh, Kurt? Yes. And Barney, yes. So hopefully by the end of next week I'll have a decision. Uh, drafted. Um, it'll be signed. Diana will file it with the town clerk. That starts a 20-day appeal period. When that appeal period runs, you're going to need to file a decision with the Norfolk Registry of Deeds, and then you can deal with Mr. Uh, Mr. Shippey as far as your building permit and the like. Okay. And if okay. you could please, please provide me a copy of the um, recorded decision at the Registry of Deeds with that okay. application. Yep. That would be him. helpful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the time being six forty five PM we have an by J. Cook Realty LLC pursuant to section 10.2.2.1 of the Code of Town of, of the Code of the Town of Foxborough, Massachusetts, Chapter 275 Zoning, of a zoning enforcement decision dated February 22, 2023, from the Town of Foxborough Building Commissioner Zoning Enforcement Officer, stating the unlawful storage at 24 East Belcher Road is a violation of Chapter 275 Zoning. Table 3-1, Table of Uses, Use 3.1.6, D4, Junkyard, Comma, Order, Graveyard. Properties located in the Limited Industrial District and the Water Resource Protection Overlay District. Um, you can sit down. Good evening. <laughs> let, me, let me just say for the audience, um, 
we're not going to make a decision on this tonight, and we're not going to spend a great deal of time on it tonight for the simple reason that we need to do a site walk. So one of the objectives tonight will be to determine an appropriate time to effect that site walk, and then we'll continue the matter to, um, to a later date. What I do want to do first is to have Mr. Shippey briefly explain why he issued the enforcement order, and then, Mr. Lovely, you can briefly contest it. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this one was a little bit more complicated. Um, I, um, I got a complaint that um, some, some trucks are, are, were in the right of way on East Belcher Street, so I um, took a ride out there and, and saw that there was some encroachment on the, the, the right of way. Um, I reached out to Mr. Cook and I did meet with him um, and I talked to him and he did agree to move that out of the right of way. While I was there, I, I noticed that the, the yard was filled with other disabled vehicles and ve other vehicles that were unregistered and stuff. And um, I was talking to him about that and I, I told him, I was like, do you have all your documentation? And he assured me he had documentation saying that he could run the business that he's running. I was like, well, okay, you can supply that, but for at the least you're going to have to go for a class three license through the Board of Selectmen, which is to hold a junkyard <coughs> license. So he ended up doing, filing that um, class three and it got remanded back to me to um, get, um, do a zoning determination on it. After looking in the file, I found that this was in violation since 2009. Um, I went back into our files and I saw there was a site plan approval that was done in 1990 that the side lot, the adjacent lot, was only allowed to have loam and soil only um, and gravel. It's like a gravel pit only and nothing has been amended to it except for the addition of loam in 1991, I do believe. So I, I wrote a memo to the um, Board of Selectmen that this is not conducive with the, um, in coordinates to our bylaw as a, as a junkyard, and I had to cite him, uh, Mr. Cook in violation of that bylaw. And here we are. Any questions for <clears throat> Mr. Shipping at this point? No. Mm -hmm. Jeff. <clears throat> Lovely. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jeff Lovely. I represent Jay Cook Realty LLC, uh, which is the owner of this parcel of land at 24 East Belcher Road in Foxborough. And with me tonight is Jeff Cook, who is a principal of that LLC. Um, as noted, this is an appeal of Mr. Shippey's letter dated February 22, 2023. Um, there's a little confusion about this because Mr. Shippey opines that the property is some sort of a junkyard, an auto graveyard, and that those uses are not permitted under our zoning bylaws. Uh, we concede that those uses are not permitted under our zoning bylaws, which I actually uh, pointed out to then town manager Bill Keegan when he invited Mr. Cook to apply for those auto licenses, um, which Mr. Cook ultimately did and then withdrew pending resolution of this issue. We do deny that the definitions in the bylaw are very vague and that we, you, and my clients use this property. They do not use it as a junkyard or auto graveyard. Uh, if you look at the definition of junk and junkyards, which I believe there's an effort to try to change them and tie them in with auto graveyards at the next town meeting, it's extremely vague, extremely broad, and could apply to almost anything and to many properties in town. It's a little bit of a slippery slope. The historical use of this particular property, um, if you can visualize the property along the um, left side of East Belcher Road. To the right part of this property is a, a large commercial building which was built in 1960, I believe, has always been used for various uses that are either pre-existing non-conforming or allowed in the district. Auto repair, 
uh, truck repair, truck storage, contractor yard, and things like that. Um, this is where Mr. Cook operates his commercial equipment moving and truck towing businesses. He has multiple large trucks, Mack trucks, that kind of thing, and large trailers. When you need something excavated on your property, the excavator is almost certainly transported there by Mr. Cook's equipment, as many contractors do not have their own low bed trailers. Uh, there's a separate tenant who repairs automobiles and trucks, and Mr. Cook repairs large trucks, pieces of equipment, and things like that on the site. Um, when he repairs trucks, he re replaces their tires. At times, he dismounts and remounts large truck bodies, components of trailers, uh, dump, dump beds, and things like that. Um, and that, that is there for use, so some of that is there for use in his auto repair business as well as for the maintenance of his own trucks. To the left of the site where the building is, is another site uh, which has historically, as far as we can tell, been used by different contractors. It was at the time Mr. Cook purchased it in about 208. Uh, the site of a loom business. So it, it had on it, or could have on it, crushers, equipment, excavators, trucks. I believe the site plan permit um, said that you can't park more than five trucks on the, on the property at the time. Uh, admittedly, that use has changed, and we admit that we do not have any site plan permit for that, and we will obtain one or apply for one once we have worked through this process. Um, you know, Mr. Shippey's letter includes a claim that the property is in violation of the Water Resource Protection District, but this use has been in place since before the Water Resource Protection District was enacted. Uh, I think it was enacted in 1995. This has been used for many of the current uses since 1960. Um, I believe that at one point Mr. Shippey had either stated to my client or agreed with my client that the property had some pre-existing non-conforming status. That's not referenced in the letter at all. Um, one of the concerns with the letter is we, we disagree with the substance, although as I'll get into in a little bit, we think it's imperative that we work with the board and with Mr. Shippey to get things back on track. But if you read the enforcement order um, as written, it would require that all of the uses on the property conforming and, and non -conf and non conforming and, and allegedly in violation would have to shut down um, remove all trailers all construction equipment etc from the property so um, it's inoperable vehicles many of the vehicles are there for repair because they're inoperable um, so it, it would effectively if enforced to its language shut down the tenant who runs an auto repair business shut down mr cook's business he couldn't keep trailers or construction equipment or his trucks on site um, now having said that i would concede that the property and its uses can be improved and we are not unwilling uh, to work with the board and with Mr. Shippey to come to a, a solution. It's very important that many of the, of the uses be maintained, but we agree that there is a substantial amount of material and, and items that could be removed. Um, so we, we think we'd like to propose that the, the order either be vacated pending further action or stayed pending further action, which I think ultimately would probably include meetings, discussions, things of that sort. I think the matter is stayed just for the fact that they've appealed your order. Absolutely. Right? It is. So, it is. Um, 
and, and I'm not, and I don't think my colleagues are, or they'll tell me if they are, you know, averse to um, trying to resolve things as amicably, amicably as appropriate and possible. Um, you know, again, we, we need to do a sidewalk, uh, which means the meeting, you know, this matter is going to have to be continued at least for a month anyhow. So any discussions that could be commenced within that period of time between you and Mr. Shippey, and then um, potentially with our involvement would be um, appropriate. So, okay. Any other thoughts in that regard? No, that's a, that's a good way to move forward, I think. No. So a site walk attended by Mr. Shippey and the, and the board members? Yes. Okay. Um, the um, Board of Health Director would like to join us as well mm -hmm. um, because he, he believes there's no violation, but he would just like to take a look. I, I do believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, there was an inspection by, I think, the Board of Health and somebody from DEP. DEP. Yeah, he just wants to clarify okay, that. Okay, right. Sure, make sure that's all rectified. Okay. So what would be convenient? When, when are you leaving in May? Well, I will not be here for the May meeting. So but I do want you to come. So goal was to, uh, was to vote at, at the May meeting, well, we'll I will be here for I mean, my, my, my goal is that we don't have to vote, that they can okay. resolve everything and we don't even have a, Okay. That, that's my hope. I shouldn't say my goal, that's my hope. So oh, if I can just mention one thing, I concede that, that um, the structure part, the building was there. It, and I talked to Mr. Cook on that. I was like, that probably has pre-existing non-conforming protection. Um, and he, he assured me that he had documentation. I said, present that to the board when you go for your class three, and they can make that determination. Um, it's the part that um, Attorney Lo Lovely said to the left that I'm more concerned on. So can I just ask a question? I know we're gonna be discussing this further <clears throat> at the site visit, but I just wanna see if I understand this. So on um, the, one of the maps that you've given us, there is um, a parcel one and a, a parcel two. So is that building on parcel two? Is it on? I'd have to see the map. It is you, as you're on East Belcher, which the highway's to your back, right. the building's on the right-hand side as you're looking at it, Right. and the vacant so, parcel is to the left. So this is one, and this is two. I believe you're right. So, yeah. so we're discussing both of them, actually. The letter was addressed to 24 East Belcher as a single parcel. As a single parcel, because by they, they effectively merge. Exactly, 40A merges them automatically. So okay, so we're discussing one and two. Yes, which is all one. <laughs> so it's all one. Okay, yeah. just just want to understand. Thank you. I was just pointing that out because they were acquired at slightly different mm -hmm. times, and the, and Mr. Cook's operations at the two parcels began at different times. Yeah, okay. I think I believe you bought that second parcel in 2008, 2009. I think it was eight. When eight, eight yeah. One he started to lease in 01, mm -hmm. the building yep. parcel. So to go back, Kim, it's possible that we won't render a decision in May. Okay. Uh, for two reasons, it's possible <clears throat> they'll come to a de you know resolution, and the matter can be withdrawn. It's possible as well that we'll still be talking in June. So. Okay. So that's why I definitely want to do it at a time that you're able to Absolutely. do it. Absolutely. And again, you said going away at the end of May, right? Yeah, Memorial Day weekend. Okay. So, Jeff, what would be good for for you? I'm, I'm generally around until July. Do you have any? Uh... I do have a vacation week. I don't know the exact dates, but it's uh... in April. So maybe if we did, if we did the site walk in early May, and then maybe push this off until for another hearing until June. All next year. <laughs> I, I think at this point I'd rather keep it on for May, you know, our, our next meeting. But let's see where things proceed. Okay. Okay. But the first week in May, for my own perspective, Monday and Tuesday I have meetings in the morning. The rest of the week I'm free. 
Um, Wednesday. I could do it in the morning as long as we finish by 1130. And then I would be free on the third from um, 2 to 330. The third is what? Wednesday. Third is Wednesday. Wednesday. Sorry, did I say a different? I meant Wednesday. Yeah. The third. You meant Thursday. Sorry, no May. We're talking May Wednesday, May third. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Thursday, May fourth. Thursday, May third in the morning. Thursday. Thursday the fourth. I could do ten to twelve. If that works for anyone else. Mm -hmm. yeah, that works for me, Kurt. <coughs> that should be fine. Lorraine, would the 4th of May, starting at 10 o'clock, be convenient for you? Yeah, that'd be fine. Scott, that good for you? I'm um, putting it in. You're, you're assuming that that'd be good for Matt? Matt yes, yeah, I'm assuming. Okay. <laughs> we can, yeah, yeah, we can do it. Okay, so we'll do a site walk. May 4th at 10. And then we'll, good. then we'll have a motion to continue it to the 18th. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. I'll just have the three of us vote. So Kim? Yes. Kurt? Yes. And Barney? Yes. And if we seem to be making progress, then we'll continue the matter to, to June. Okay. okay. So May 4 at um, 10 o'clock at your location. Uh, let me just say that I've gotten two, we've received two letters from, um, from individuals relative to this matter. And I'll read them or we'll read them into the record when we do continue the matter. And we'll also allow for public comment at, um, at that point in time. No. Like to talk I'm, we've continued. Why should we waste no. our time coming here? Because we you just say we can't talk. Because we it. have not seen the property, and I want to wait. I want to give us. I want to give us the opportunity to see the property before having commentary. In the interim, he just keeps moving up, it up to our street. I want to assure us that he's not going to move stuff from there. You'll, you'll have to speak with Mr. Shippey. Okay. I'm, I hate to do that to Mr. Shippey, but you'll have to talk with him. He's just shifting it up. All right, we're done. Uh, I do have just one more. If there's special parking instructions, could you just forward that to, you know, say Diana, and then she could let us okay. know. Sure. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sure, you want to be in Foxborough.
sorry, I did that. <laughs> for what, for moving stuff? This is like, this is the, the junkyard on Belcher Street, right? Yeah. yeah that's right. Betsy, you have the, the conditions? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I've actually got two things I want to do relative to Walnut Street. First, we have a an interim invoice from um, TEC, which again was our peer review consultants. And this invoice covered, <clears throat> I guess, the services from February 1 through February 28. It was in the amount of $5,840. Um, I had hoped that they would be able to get to us in time for tonight their invoice for March, but they uh, apparently haven't been able to do so. Either way, I think they're going to be under the $14,000 that, um, yeah. that we required initially. But um, I'd like to at least approve the, the interim invoice that, that we've received. Mm -hmm. So we have a motion to do that. I move that we approve payment or the applicant's payment of the invoice for 5900 uh, 5840 Sorry, $5,840 for our consultant. And Lorraine, I think because you were voting, you've got to second it. Okay. Uh, Kim? Second. Yes. Lorraine? Yes. And Barney, yes. Okay. So the second objective is to talk about some of the um, conditions that we would we'd like to see. And that was, again, a request that Kim made at the um, last meeting. Um, the decision and... Uh, Betsy, I know you've seen comprehensive permit decisions before. There's a lot of, I don't want to say boilerplate, that's a garbage wording we used in law school, but there's a lot of uh, language that you'll see in every, um, every comprehensive permit decision. And um, Judy Barrett, who's our uh, 40B consultant, is working, working on that. When I spoke with her last week, she also asked if we had any specific conditions that we would want to impose in addition to the, the general ones. And, and what I did was came up with a, a list of 13 that I could think of. Um, and I just want to have a discussion with, you know, of those, see if people have any others they want to add, or if there's any, any they want to take away, you know, what have you. But let me first ask you, if you, have you had an opportunity to see them? Yes, we have. And do you have any adverse reactions to, to start? Or? No, they're just a couple things that I think we want to clarify. Yeah. So as we go through them, we mostly just make sure that it's clear of the whole, you know, mm -hmm. the whole point. So. And, and ultimately, you know, when, when I send these off to, uh, to Judy, whatever we agree on, she's going to add a little bit more verbiage to what I would hope. Um, if I have to edit it, edit it I will. But, but uh, hopefully that'll clarify. Mm -hmm. uh, these are more bullet points than they are, um, you know, full-blown specifications, but um, why don't you tell us what your questions are, what your concerns are? Well, we'll go right down them. Um, again, I think it may be addressed when <clears throat> the phone goes into it, but um, item number one, Betsy brought up that she believes that it should state in there that the preference has to say 70% yeah, in the permit it, itself, not just the maximum extent possible, but specifically say 70%. I'm sure the consultant would have picked that up, but we want to go over that, you know, so that the Foxborough residents have that ability and it's crystal clear on the decision. And it may have to be limited only to the initial lease up, but I'm assuming mm -hmm. that Judy will yeah. know the requirements. I just wouldn't want to have us not get the maximum without it being stated that way. Yeah. So the reason I wrote maximum extent was I figured that was 70 percent, so I would cover sure. it that way. But no, okay. I agree. Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, item number two, uh, one of our concerns is the wording of other road improvements, which is kind of unknown on our uh, part. But also uh, one of my concerns is, is 
if the traffic light gets in there, is it installed and operational? Mm -hmm. and let's say it's in the fall, and for whatever reason, it's decided we'll finish the other improvements in the spring. Mm -hmm. Now we can't get the occupancy permits mm -hmm. because of a decision made by others, even though the light itself is operational and the roadway itself is operational. So, you know, we'd like to have a change to say installation uh, and operational of the traffic signal um, at that corner. Because I don't think they're going to get that signal going until those roadways uh, are safe to be used with the signal. Mm -hmm. And again, the other road improvements are kind of an unknown statement, but also there could be a delay in getting that done for whatever reason. And the winter is you know, an example that kind of jumped out to me. Okay. Any concerns about that? No. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. I, I don't think we had anything on three per se. You know, it can just be tightened up a little bit. Um, item number four, removal of existing trees between the location of building three uh, and the abutting properties, um, restricted to those dead and deceased. Um, again, it's not from the building itself because you have the building, the roadway. And then you have the um, planting area mm -hmm. for the new trees. Right. So it's really from um, probably the edge of um, disturbance um, where the uh, planting's going to be. Do they have a, a drawing of that showing where the plant? Yeah, it's, it, it's in the um, yeah. in the well, in what will be the approved plans. It is. There's a uh, area of um, clearing. I miss you guys. Land. Exhibit, I mean. yeah. So from that point on. We agree with that. It's one of the L's. Mm -hmm. yeah, right here. Right. So a, we, we can reference it to the um, page in the approved plans? Yep. Okay. Yeah, however we want to do it. Also, staying kind of with that, um, unless I missed it, there's no condition in here with regard to uh, the removal of healthy trees in that buffer area and, and also putting in uh, the 25 evergreens that were going to be placed in that area um, um, for the benefit of those um, yeah, I, residential I, buffer. Yeah, I, I, I thought of that. The reason I didn't do that um, was, again, you know, th this will be the, the approved plan. Sure. You know, there'll be a reference to it, and again, there's there is a page in there that shows where the plantings are going that's to be. Sure. So that's the reason I didn't um, okay didn't specify that, but I certainly have no objection to uh, to specifying it. Right, because th there could be some healthy trees that are going to be removed mm -hmm. in order to put the healthy trees in certain yeah. areas. We talked about that, but other than that, no healthy sure. trees are going to be removed. But you know, we're going to meet with uh, town officials and hopefully the residential neighbors in order to determine where those 25 evergreens are going to be placed so they have the most uh, impact. So what are, you, what are you suggesting then, Frank? Um, something to the effect that the removal of healthy trees in the buffy area between the service road and the property line um, is not anticipated except when disease or dying, and then 25 evergreens will be installed closer to the abutting property line for additional screening location to be determined um, in the field with property owners and town officials. You have something you can, you can send me? And I'll massage it, okay? Yep. Okay. It needs it. <laughs> I'm sorry? I kind of scribbled it down. <laughs> yep. I said it needs massaging. But yeah. Okay. You know. All right. So we want to make sure we have the property owners that are there, town yep. officials, for everyone to decide. And that kind of dovetails with four. Um, uh, five and six uh, were fine. S seven and eight. Um, Do you want to clarify the seven? Who will notify? Oh yes. Um, so residential bu butters. Mm -hmm. We want to um, get your understanding. Is it just direct to butters? Is it, you know, the abutters from the abutters list? Um, I, I, we thought it would be direct abutters to the property, direct residential <coughs> abutters to the property, so we don't have to notify the Commonwealth yeah. if they're an abutter. Um, well, what, what, what I'm thinking in terms of is, you know, the abutters on, on North High, mm -hmm. the abutters on, on Walnut. Walnut. 
Um, so we can say residential butters on. <laughs> uh, direct butters? See what I'm saying? Your, your, your original butter list was more than direct butters, wasn't it? Yes, it's the typical 300 foot. Yeah. You know, technically under state law. Yeah, it's 300 it's, and, it, yeah. Well, it's direct to butters. And it butters to a butters. And a butters, a butters within 300, 300 feet. feet. But so I think you, you could be 300 yeah. feet, but you're in a butter of an abutter, and you shouldn't be on that list. Right. You know, but typically towns just go 300 feet. Um, and again, we just want to do residential abutters. You know, yeah, I don't definitely. want to notify the, you know, there's no need to notify yeah. the Commonwealth, <laughs> no need to notify. Um, and we'll, we'll do whatever the board wants. We just, you know, want an understanding. Um, And again, not everyone on North or Walnut Street is within. No, I don't want to. You, know, you don't need all of Walnut Street. Um, do you want to give it some thought? Yeah, I think it's just more a clarification. Yeah. But. Um, under number nine. Um, yeah, actually, L Lorraine had a question about nine. Maybe that. Yeah, I just I thought it was supposed to be uh, switch locations with the dog park and the putting green, not the pickleball court. Okay. And that's how we're understanding. Is what we had we had discussed at the last meeting. And that's what I remember as well. Okay. Yeah. Hi everyone. This is this is Jonathan from Weston Sampson. There was a question about location of the pickleball court um, and how close they are to the um, closest to Butters on Walnut and North High. I have that information if you want that. So the, the one on Walnut Street is 289 feet, and then the closest on North High is 618 feet. Yeah, no, that, mm -hmm. thank you. So the dog part and the putting green are switched. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I thought in number 10 to include the dog park in those same restrictions so that, again, for noise reasons. Um, I think the dog Hours park of operation. could be used, at, you know, beyond those. I don't think the dog park's going to be behind the buildings. And, um, you know, we'd like to keep it the way it is if we could. Because how can you tell a dog not to go to the bathroom from eight <laughs> sundown until <laughs> eight a.m.? I'm, I'm talking about. Well, I think I'm talking about a dog the so, park is you know, different. Socializing dogs. Yes, it's socializing dogs, and they can be running around and barking at each other. Just taking a walk. Obviously, mm -hmm. dogs need to go. To, I don't know. I don't have a dog, but if they need to walk at eleven o'clock at night, they need to walk at eleven o'clock at night. But sort of letting them loose within a dog park could be noisy at eleven o'clock. Mm -hmm. So I would be comfortable leaving it. Um, the 8 a.m. adding the addition. I agree with Lorraine the addition of dog park to number 10 and um, Until sundown for the dog park obviously not restricting the movement of dogs outside of that around the rest of the property Okay, I, I, I think in time you your residents probably would not want uh, a dog park open to midnight or no. what have you right. uh, Again no lighting mm -hmm. on, on the pickle and uh, bought you cool to the putting green uh, It's fine by us because there's no you can add the dog park there because mm -hmm. no one's going to be using it You know during the night. So yeah, so now there are going to be general lights out there that yeah. will splash over but no lights specifically for okay, those great. things. So adding the dog park into number 11. Number 11 is fine too. Great. And, and 12 and 13 um, We were comfortable with also. Okay. Anything that you can think of in addition? No. Kurt? No. Lorraine, anything else? No, thank you. Scott, do you have anything? One thing I might like to add is like doing a pre-construction meeting with all um, pertinent department heads, mm -hmm. like fire department, um, myself, um, land use director, um, water and sewer, just so that we're all on the same page sure. when you stop breaking ground. Happy to. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I think you brought that up too before. Yeah. yeah. I you say that. It just makes it easier. That way I'm not feeling a million calls, what's happening. <laughs> okay. You have any questions, comments? 
Are we doing okay as far as you're concerned? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I'm praying the leaves keep coming on. <laughs> <laughs> it's not filling in on the bottom. Come on. <laughs> okay, so what I'll do is I'll make these changes. Frank, I'll probably give you a call uh, on a couple of the changes, or maybe I'll run it by you before I send it over to... Uh, Yep, and I'll, I'll email you that language yeah. that we have. Yeah, you know, what I'd like to do is get it over to Judy early next week. Um, she told me she was starting to work on it. So we will continue to, um, to contact her in that regard. But she knows when the next meeting is. She knows we're meeting on March 9th, uh, March 9th, Thanks. May 9th. <laughs> and she knows we'd like something in advance, you know, to look at. So. Let's hope. Um, What's your definition of an advance? <laughs> Good Not question. the same day. <laughs> well, if the last one was any. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, but, but again, this should be a little bit easier than the last one. Yeah, so, so we could have at least a few days yeah. in advance. So that would be very helpful. I mean, if I can get this over to her, say, Monday or Tuesday of next week, you know, I'll, I'll give her a call afterwards just to see where she is. That's great. And, Thank you. Uh, Move it along. Mm -hmm. I, I know that the letter that I drafted went to DHCD. Yep. Because uh, yes. Paige had mentioned she got some comment back that, you know, things were moving along. So uh, obviously they've seen it. And yes. So it is moving. So that's the good news. Okay. Um, any idea when work on the um, on the signal would actually begin? Oh, I have no idea. Yeah. I'm not. I wasn't privy to that information yet. We were told going out to bid this mid July, maybe? Going out to bid. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I know they've done some infrastructure work there already to prepare for it, but mm -hmm. other than that, I don't, I don't have a timeline. Yeah, when I said road improvements, my understanding was going to be you know, left turn or right turn lanes. Sure. And. Um, that's what I was thinking in terms of, yeah. Four-way lights, I presume. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, but yeah, I think your point is, is well taken. It, yeah. You know, they, they, they could have the signal in, you know, before anything else is completed, so. Right. And we also need the sewer line. Yeah. Down there, too, so. Yeah. Okay. And we can't even open without that, so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't. <laughs> okay. Anything else? No. Okay. All right. Thank Thanks you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. All right, I don't think we have anything else, do we? I don't think I don't we do. Think we, we already talked about what might possibly be coming in May. Mm -hmm. So I think that's it. Mm -hmm. So in May, next month, we can figure out a meeting date for June. Yeah. Yes. May meetings at 430. Yeah, so yeah the, the May 9th meeting is at 430. Right. And it's stay here. Pretty certain we'll have a sign request for me. Uh, I, yeah, I yeah, yeah. I don't know. I've been talking to the to the lawyer. The cell tower, probably not. Okay. Uh, his name is Chase Johnson, so he wants to. Uh, he knows the deadline is the 27th, so he wants to get it in for that. So they're just down to the how many copies and stuff like that. Okay. All right, what about motion They plan to, to submit on or before April 28th to make the May 18th hearing. Yeah. Want to make a motion? I move that we um, close the meeting. Second. Lorraine. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Kurt. Yes. Kim. Yes. Arnie. Yes. Diana. Yes. And <laughs> yes. We are done. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you.